So the level 99 game jam is just around the corner. I'll only have seven days to make a game around the theme of the jam. But the level 99 game jam is a bit different than other game jams, mostly because of the sponsors they have. These sponsors include Pico, a VR headset company, an actual Olympic swimming company, and a Squid Games. Anyway, because of their sponsors, the level 99 game jam has a prize pool of $100,000. The winner will also get a free trip to Singapore during the Olympic esports week, so they can go watch the top tic-tac-toe gamers compete. I am not kidding, this is an actual Olympic esport. Go look it up, I'm not lying. So with my uh, previous experience making games, I think I have a pretty good shot of winning the prize. I guess the first thing for me to do is watch the theme reveal, so I know what kind of game I'll be making. I was six years old when I saw Bill May swimming Egom for the first time. I'm not really sure what this has to do with game development. Uh, let me just skip to the end and, uh, oh yeah, here it is. Oh man, I wonder what it's gonna be. I mean, it's gotta be something good. Take a deep breath. So I need to make a game about uh, breathing. I wonder what the people in the comments think about this. Here it goes, boys. Whoever's gonna join, good luck. Good luck, everyone. The CEO is like Raskolnikov. Okay, how do you pronounce that word? Raskolnikov. The CEO is like Raskolnikov, dividing people into the great and the trembling. It's disgusting. In fact, to get the prefix great in our world, it is enough to earn a lot of money. Yes, it's hard work, but not so hard as to divide people so obviously. After I graduate from the philology department, I will write a book about it. And that comment was made by uh, Squid Games. Anyway, now that I know what the theme is, I can come up with an idea. The first thing that came to mind when I heard the theme, take a deep breath, was an oxygen bar that depleted over time, which is probably what 99% of people thought of because, I mean, let's be honest, there isn't much room for interpretation with this theme. So I'm thinking the game will be about an astronaut who has crashed on the moon, broken his helmet, and is slowly suffocating to death. Overall, it's a pretty wholesome idea. I started by making a Unity project and added this astronaut sprite that'll be the player. Okay, you got me. Okay, it's not an astronaut. I was kind of hoping that nobody would notice, but but I mean, I guess it's a little obvious. This is just a placeholder while I get the movement set up. Because the player will be on the moon, I want to make the jump feel floaty. I might have made it just a little too floaty. After dialing back the jump, the movement actually now feels pretty good. And now I can actually make the real astronaut. I'm not sure if you can tell or not, but I'm not that good at making pixel art. I think this might actually be the worst pixel art ever made by any human ever. It's actually kind of impressive. But after a bit of work, I actually managed to make something pretty decent. And I replaced the uh, old astronaut sprite with the new one. Now, the next step is to add animation. And if you thought I was bad at regular pixel art, just wait until you see my pixel art animation. It doesn't get any better. The idle animation is pretty simple. I can just bob the head up and down and it's good enough. But the run animation, that one is a little harder to do. I went through a few variations before I somehow created something that actually resembles a walk. And now I have a fully functional player, minus all of the functionality. More specifically, the player's oxygen, which is the entire point of the game. The player should lose their oxygen over time because they're on the moon. Right now I have two problems. There is no oxygen and the player isn't on the moon. They're just in the void. To fix that second problem, I made a background sprite and some ground tiles. And now the game actually takes place on the moon. And to fix that other issue, I made an oxygen bar that will decrease over time. But let's be honest, it's kind of boring. I want the player to actually feel like they're suffocating in a fun kind of way. So to do that, I made an animation that'll change the color of the astronaut's head as they run out of oxygen. Also, the player will explode when their oxygen runs out. And now the game is a little more realistic, but there is still one major problem. The player runs out of oxygen in 60 seconds. Unless you're a professional speedrunner, a 60 second game isn't very fun. So to fix this problem, I added an airlock to the game that'll refill your oxygen. And you might be wondering, why is there a random airlock on the moon? Does this answer your question? So the part of the moon that you land on is a base set up by other astronauts. But uh, you might notice that these astronauts, they're no longer with us. I will always remember uh, unnamed astronaut one and unnamed astronaut two. I remember back at astronaut training when I walked past unnamed astronaut one and he said hi and I said hi back. Good times. May they rest in peace. Okay, funeral over. Time to leave. But these astronauts dying isn't all bad news because from their corpse, you can take a jetpack. With this jetpack, you can uh, jump higher. It's pretty cool. But you might be wondering what actually happened to the astronauts. And that's a good question. I'm gonna need to use some detective skills to figure that one out. It looks like the killer may have taken another victim. Maybe by following this mysterious blood trail, I can find the culprit of these gruesome murders. It seems I've fallen into a hole and a, I think that's a leg. I've almost reached the end of the trail. I wonder what this evil murderer looks like.
Yeah, so nothing's at the end of the trail because I haven't made anything yet. But I know I want this murderer to be the most terrifying thing you have ever seen. So this is what I came up with. Pretty scary if you ask me. This would give me nightmares for days. I added the alien to the game and gave him a little laser blaster that he can fire at the player. Also, the player will explode when they die. So once you reach the end of the blood trail, you find out that the culprit of the murders is uh, this alien. And because you don't have a weapon, all you can really do is just stand there and dodge the lasers. To solve that problem, I decided to give the player a weapon. Just kidding. Instead of doing that, I made an asteroid that'll crash into the moon and kill the alien. I probably went a little overboard because this literally took me multiple days to make. Once the asteroid kills the alien, you can pick up his blaster, which will definitely be important in this next section of the game because I want to make an alien city that the player will need to get through. At the entrance of the city, I added a sign that says, you better subscribe right now or else I will call NASA and get them to drop an asteroid on your house. <clears throat> um, Actually, it says, welcome to Alienburg because the city's called Alienburg. And I don't know about you, but Alienburg is looking pretty empty. I started making some houses for the city and I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what an alien house should look like. I haven't actually seen one in real life. But then I had a random burst of inspiration and an image of the Doof Tower from Phineas and Ferb entered my mind. So I used that inspiration and added some alien stuff to the top of the roof. And now I have a pretty good looking alien house that kind of looks like the Doof Tower from Phineas and Ferb. I also made a smaller house to add some variation. Then I just destroyed them a little bit. Maybe a bit more than a little bit. I did this for two reasons. One, it adds a bit of backstory to the game. And two, I just enjoy the chaos. So now Alienburg looks like a city, but right now there are no aliens in Alienburg. That's a problem. So I added some aliens in the windows of some of the houses, which is a little bit creepy. And I also added some enemy aliens that you need to fight. But let's be honest, these aliens are kind of basic. So that's why I decided to add a new enemy to Alienburg, the UFO alien. So you might be wondering what makes this enemy different. It looks different. That's about it. It also explodes if you were wondering about that. I've added a bunch of enemies to Alienburg, but I think I accidentally made it way too hard. The hardest part is this moment right here where you get sandwiched between two aliens. It's a bit hard. I could fix this issue pretty easily by removing one of the aliens, but I'm sure if you try hard enough, you can get past it. Maybe. And now I need to admit something. I only have one day left to finish this game, so I need to quickly add a final boss and an ending. Once you reach the end of Alienburg, you'll come across a big door. The door isn't very important, but I just thought it was kind of cool. And I mean, it is, right? On the other side of the door is the boss room, which at the moment is pretty empty because there isn't a boss. So I went to go make the boss, and I wasn't too sure what he should look like, so I decided to base him on your mom. He's also the alien king, as you can tell by the crown on his head. The boss fight is currently functional, but the boss also doesn't do anything, so I guess it's not very functional, except for the explosion when it dies. If you haven't figured it out yet, I like when things explode. To add functionality to the boss, I added this gun that the boss will use with his mind, since he can't move his body because he is really fat like your mom. Definitely not because I'm afraid to make an attack animation. That's ridiculous. And now the boss is pretty much done, and it's actually not that bad, which is really saying something for me. I have a history of making pretty horrible bosses. Now, the next thing for me to do is make an ending for the game, and also a beginning, because I, for some reason, haven't done that yet. I started by making the intro cutscene that'll show the player crashing their rocket onto the moon. And I managed to make a pretty good looking background. I added a sun and I used my expert level geography skills to make this realistic earth. That's Africa, this is Asia, this is Asia. That's not how earth works, right? After that, I made a rocket and used some simple animation to make this cutscene. Truly a work of art. The only thing better than this cutscene is the end cutscene. It's the exact same cutscene, but in reverse, and with a UFO. You can't say I don't put effort into my games. Now, this is normally the point in the game jam where I realize the game has dozens of game-breaking bugs and I do not have enough time to fix them all, but somehow, this game doesn't have any major bugs. It's actually a miracle. There is one issue where after the game ends, your cursor doesn't work, and for some reason, the quit button doesn't work, but I literally exported the game with 30 seconds left on the timer, so I didn't have any time to fix those. I started making an itch page for the game, and this is where the most important decision of the game jam lies. What should I call the game? I came up with the name Moon Crash because the game's about you crashing on the moon. Pretty creative idea, if you ask me. After making the itch page, I submitted my game to the jam, and I actually think I have a decent chance of winning the prize. And by prize, I mean the trip to Singapore for the Olympic Esports Week. I could care less about the $100,000. I just really want to watch some professional tic-tac-bow in person. I've left a link in the description for you to try out the game if you're interested, even though I've already spoiled the entire game for you. If you do try it out, make sure to leave an honest, objective review of the game. Unless your review is negative, then you're not allowed. After you try out the game, you should watch this video where I make a roguelike game jam in seven days. I'll see you in the next one.